Hello, this is Jack Yost, your business professor, and I want to welcome you to this first class on Management 323, Management Theory and Practice, offered by the Catholic University of America here in Washington, D.C. Uh, we will have about 15 such lecturettes uh, to correspond with each of the chapters in our text, which will follow along. They'll be about 12 to 15 minutes, and we'll be having them out about twice a week. The first uh, chapter that we'll be covering is called Managing Effectively in a Changing World, Chapter 1. And to start, let me tell a story that is often told about uh, our, the second president of the United States, John Adams. He's having a meal with his vice president, Thomas Jefferson. And John Adams is discussing about getting things done through the thinking support of others, management at the highest level, leadership, getting things done. And he says that I must control events or events will control me. Adams is wondering how to get things done, and he says, I must control events, or events will control me. And in that simple statement, John Adams tells us the difference between a manager, leaders, at the highest level, and how they get things done, and and the difference between management and, and individual contributors. That managers get things done through the active support of others, but managers also have to control events. We will be spending the next few weeks talking about how managers uh, do their jobs, how we can learn to do their jobs, but also how to, to, to get the, the best from our staffs, the best from our direct reports, and to get things done through the thinking support of others. We will control events. We'll have a number of learning objectives for our short time together today. We'll describe the four functions of management. We'll understand what managers uh, at different organizational levels do. We'll define the skills needed to be an effective manager. We'll summarize the major challenges facing managers today and recognize how successful managers achieve a competitive advantage. Management defined here is the process of working with people and resources to accomplish organizational goals. Accomplishing organizational goals is, is the definition of being effective. Managers are effective. Now, I want to amend this uh, management definition a, a little bit to say that management described in one word is relationships. We will control events through our relationships. Management in one word is relationships. Management in one sentence is getting things done through the thinking support of others. Uh, managers aren't are, are graded on being effective, not being efficient. Individual contributors uh, who get things done with our hands, now as, a, as a brain surgeon, a taxi cab driver, uh, an accountant, a bricklayer, bookkeeper, get things done directly, working directly with their hands, and they get things done individually. They are efficient. Uh, the, we provide the individual contributor with time-saving devices and labor-saving devices so that the individual contributor can get things done faster, better, and cheaper. The individual contributor gets graded on being perfect. Here is where we get the, 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 the all the dictums of, of Six Sigma, of quality is job one, of zero, uh, zero tolerance, of zero errors. The individual contributor works with perfection. The manager, not. The manager deals in the world of imperfection because managers don't deal with directly with software, with dealing with laying bricks or, or, or acting as a truck driver. Managers get things done through other people, not things. And managers dealing with people understand that we have to get things done dealing with the crooked timber of the human condition, that, that people are flawed. People aren't perfect. We have a long way to go to achieve perfection, and things are always going wrong. This is why managers make so much money. It is easier to get perfection out of a, out of a machinist turning a crankshaft on a lathe with very tight tolerances than trying to control a number of people to get them to accomplish organizational goals. Managers, I don't want to say, are being efficient because managers might be getting faster, better, cheaper doing the wrong things. Effective do is mean doing the right things to advance organizational goals. Four functions of management planning is the systematic making decisions, systematically making decisions about the goals and activities that, the, that an individual, a group, or work unit, or the overall organization will pursue. Uh, planning is analyzing current situations, anticipating the future, or determining objectives, and deciding what types of activities the company will engage. We have examples of planning activities, and the one that I want to concentrate most on our chart of many bubbles here is to anticipate the future. Managers 
control events, and we're going to talk about how we can do that, but also to anticipate events, not only for the organization, but for our department where we want to train our staff, our direct reports, to anticipate events. Under four types, four functions of management, we have organizing, which is the assembling and coordinating, coordinating the human, financial, physical, and informational uh, informational and other resources needed to achieve goals. Part of organizing, organizing is to attract people to the organization, specifying job responsibilities, group grouping jobs into work and work units, marshaling and allocating resources. The other two functions of managing are leading, which is stimulating people to be high performers. We want to be, we want to hire an A team and controlling, which is monitoring performance and making needed changes, of course, corrections to a standard that we set. Now, performing all four functions of management is not all done in the, into a typical day for managers, not, a, not at all. Days for the typical manager are busy and fragmenting and are, are summarized with, with dealing with interruptions, meetings, and, and firefighting. Now, if I've done my job right here as your business professor on this management lecture and this management training series, you should have very little firefighting to do. Manage, performing all four management functions, good managers don't neglect any of the four functions. There are four different levels of management, but I want to spend time talking about uh, not the top-level managers and the mid-level managers. We'll spend time talking about them, but I want to start talking about the team leader. These are our employees responsible for the facilitating the, the successful team performance. Now, this is will, will typically be the first spot that the, the, the individual contributor makes as he begins to leave the job of an individual contributor and moves into the, to the, to the managerial ranks. Here's what it typically looks like. You are a, a waitress, you're a wage staff, and you are responsible for six tables. You have a station of six tables, and you've done such a fantastic job that you get promoted to being a shift leader, foreman, uh, or, or a team leader. And you're responsible for, for the work, for the output, of three other waitresses and their three other stations. Now, the great challenge of your new job as in a managerial role is that you are also responsible for your six individual tables. In other words, you're still an individual contributor as a waitress for your six tables, but you're also a manager in that you have to manage three other waitresses. You're doing both jobs at once, the jobs of an, the job of an individual contributor and the job of a manager. These are in, in two entirely different skill sets, I, I, different animals, different planets. Individual contributors are night and day, east and west, from what a manager is and what a manager does. But typically, that will be your first job. Well, you'll be doing both at the same time as probably a work foreman, doing your job as an individual contributor. You're driving nails, but you have to manage a team of other uh, of 15 other carpenters. This happens all the time. And this is the toughest job in the world. And I'll talk a little bit more about the work of individual contributors and managers. Uh, there's three roles that managers all perform of uh, interpersonal roles informational roles and decisional roles. Now I want to spend a, a few minutes on decision in that these roles of an entrepreneurial dis, d disturbance handler and, and negotiator that the, the boss makes decisions but he makes decisions based upon recommendations that he is going to train his staff to bring to him. Remember the old cliche that the boss doesn't want to hear problems, the boss wants to see some solutions. The boss wants to see from you, the staff or the individual contributor, I would like to see from you some research, develop some options, and then your recommendation. Uh, managers need three broad skills, technical skills, conceptual and decision skills. Now, I want, I, I want to submit, though, that, that uh, every manager needs some technical skills because that's probably how you got promoted to start with. You were very good at your job, and you were so good at your job as an individual contributor that the, the management team above you said, well, if he's so good as a uh, bricklayer, well, of course, he can make a good foreman. And we know that's, of course, not true because they're entirely two different skill sets. And that's why consultants and, and uh, institutions of higher education uh, 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 provide such a terrific service is that we, we show you how to, be, um, to learn the skills of being a manager. Now, remember, I can't teach you how to be a manager. I can, I can, I can teach you the science. I can, we will walk through in our short time together uh, um, the things that you can do to be a good manager. But you only learn to be a good manager by on-the-job training, by practicing. You can't learn to ride a bike at a, at a seminar. 
you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but that is the world of management. Your job as a manager is less consumed with the technical skills of the know-how as it is working with people, the conceptual skills, getting along with other people, and decision-making skills. Technical skills is only a small, small part small part uh, of what managers do and the higher you rise up in the managerial ranks the less important te these technical skills will get at all and, and, and at the highest the highest reaches you won't have anything to do with them jack welch has a phd in chemical engineering and he didn't do anything with chemical engineering running general electric uh, managers need broad skills of interpersonal communication skills and emotional intelligence now the all managers will be spending most of their time in communication. Most of their day is spent in some kind of, of, of back and forth with staff, their boss, internal peers, and external peers. Most of the day, manager's day is spent in communication, and that is the work of being a manager. Uh, the importance of skills at different managerial levels. Uh, manager changes facing managers, globalization, technolog technological, technological change, the importance of knowledge and ideas, and collaboration across organizational boundaries and uh, diverse labor force. I want to emphasize and want to keep in mind the collaboration of organization, uh, co collaboration across organizational boundaries. We'll talk more about that. Uh, business operates on a global scale, offices and facilities in countries worldwide. This means that your talent, the company's talent, can come from anywhere and can go anywhere, but can come from anywhere. And the internet makes globalization uh, inevitable in that if it's not core to your company, we'll probably ship it offshore. Uh, technological change. The internet enables managers to be mobile and connected 24/7, and that's not all. That's not that good. We should take one day a week off. Uh, everybody should take uh, take a day, uh, one day a week off, much like um, uh, Chick Fil A does, to rest the people and the equipment. And it's a virtual marketplace, means to sell, which this it's a means to sell. It's a channel of distribution to sell goods and services, uh, and, and an information service. It speeds up the internet, the web speeds up globalization. Uh, the internet provides access to information, allows better informed decisions, provides efficiency of division, uh, decision making, and facilitates the design of new products, pharmaceuticals, to financial services. Now, the internet does that. It provides a, a tremendous amount of, of information. It's all free, and it's all equal. It's all there, and it's all fast. And what we need as managers are effective staff or efficient staff to help our job, to help us do our job effectively, but efficient staff that act as good filters for us to do some good research, filter out all of the nonsense that's online, that's, that's on the web, and give us from that research some options and a good recommendation. I want a good recommendation from my staff. Knowledge management uh, practices uh, aimed at discovering and harnessing an organization's intellectual resources uh, through knowledge workers, a, a phrase that comes to us uh, by Peter Drucker. And uh, collaboration boosts performance, requires collaboration requires productive communication among different departments, divisions, and other subunits of the organization. And this is what managers get paid uh, so handsomely to do well is that you not just you don't just manage your staff below you, which is what traditionally we think what management is a plan, organize, lead, and control. But you manage your boss above you, who sets your priorities. He is he or she is the most important person in your life outside of your spouse or significant other. Your manager sets your priorities. We also have to worry about uh, on collaboration our internal peers and external peers. Internal peers is those people over in, in, in human resources and finance and the man that runs HIVAC and, and uh, uh, purchasing. Uh, and we, we have to develop friendships with them and we have to also have to develop friendships and working relationships, which is a key word for management, of our ex external peers, the guy who runs the government affairs, uh, uh, the local elected officials, uh, our competitors, our suppliers, our customers, uh, for those of our peers and equals that are outside the organization. So communication for the manager is, a, is, a, is itself the full-time job, the work of the manager. Companies today must motivate and capitalize on the ideas of people outside the organization, of consultants, of educator, educators, uh, uh, and uh, as in the capacity that I'm acting as now, or as a consultant, ad agencies and suppliers. Uh, diversity needs to be leveraged. The, uh, the labor force, the people that we will hire, will continue to grow more diverse. Uh, uh, we'll have a, a, the, the growth of older workers will incur 
will occur when, when about one out of four of our workers will be 55 or older. Hispanics will be at 18 percent of the of labor force. Asian, Asians, uh, Pacific Rim will be about six percent of the labor force. A higher percentage of men, of women than men, will join the labor force. White, that's non-Hispanic workers, participation in the labor force will drop from 68 to 64 percent. Sources of competitive advantage. Innovation, quality, service, speed, and cost competitive. Now, Peter Drucker said that the thing that separates the United States there from the from the from the rest of the world's economy, the thing that we do best in USA is marketing and innovation. And I would add to that, as Peter Drucker said, is that World War II was won by the USA and the Allies on the on the strength of our managerial talent, our ability to get things done to other people. So the source of our competitive advantage is, of course, marketing and innovation. But it's our it's our it's our management talent. Sources of competitive advantage of innovation: the introduction of new goods and services. Most often, the most important innovation is not the product itself, but it's how it's delivered. The channel of distribution, the quality of the product, the excellence of your product, goods or services. Uh, historically, equality refers to the attractiveness, attractiveness, lack of detail, lack of defects, reliability, and long-term de dependability, which is to say in the ISO 9000 world that this is a consistent product, reliability, so that it's consistent with what the customer expects, either from a reasonably priced product or from a premium, premium priced product, reliability and consistency is what, the, is, is, uh, is, what, is what is expected by the consumer, and the manager has to deliver. Uh, competitive advantage is about uh, quality. Today's preventing defects from the curb, which is what we get out of our staff, is to prevent them uh, or, does, or is planning our work and planning the work of our units so that uh, defects are prevented before they occur, achieving zero defects in manufacturing of the product itself, and then in the planning stage of designing products for quality. That's part of the management, management job is to oversee this to make sure that our staff deliver and our direct reports deliver. Services and speed and dependability, which an organization delivers what customers want. What customers want. Speed is fast, timely, and execution, response, and delivery of results. Cost competitiveness, cost competitiveness nowadays is keeping costs low to achieve profits and be able to offer prices that are attractive to consumers. The best managers deliver all five advantages. Now, don't assume that you can settle for just one of these competitive advantages. Managers deliver them all in a, in a balanced scorecard. But the, 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 the great challenge of management is that trade-offs have to occur among the five sources of competitive advantage. It's not a zero-sum game where one has to suffer the expense of, other, uh, of others, uh, not at all. Uh, managers have to understand that we deal in the world of ambiguity and uncertainty and the great fog of business. Managers d don't deal in the world of perfection, you must remember. And that's, the, that's what the challenge the individual contributor has. Managers have the great challenge of getting things done through the active support of others where we have to make compromises, where we have to... to where we, where we often do nothing, as, as Dr. Minsberg said, managers do nothing but manage or, or, or deal with conundrums. That there are just, just ba balances to be made, trade-offs to be made, and it's, and it's hard to work. And that's, that's part of the decisions that, that managers have to make. Uh, let's go ahead and stop our first uh, uh, lesson today. I want to welcome you to and invite you to uh, uh, complete the assignment and send that in uh, to me, and uh, we will uh, continue on with chapter number two, and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you.